You know, whenever you see somebody that's blessed, you might see their glory, but you don't know their story. For the past 30 years, my wife and I have uh, traveled throughout the world, setting up, well, what most people would call an orphanage. We put together amazing places and that are forever homes for children and leprosy villages, digging water wells, saving boys and girls out of sexual trafficking all over the world. And I wanna tell you, you actually go into these places to make a tremendous impact upon them. And then what happens is they end up making such an impact on you that you walk away and say, I can never, ever, ever be the same again after that. Hello friends, I'm Troy Brewer. And I'm a senior pastor out at Open Door Church. And behind everything that you see that is on this, that is all things Open Door Church, there's this drive within us to be the hands and feet of King Jesus. There have been times where we have seen God Almighty move in such an incredible way that it impacted and changed our lives forever. On today's very, very, very special edition of the Open Door Experience, I wanna be talking to some very special friends of mine. We're gonna be having a conversation with friends that I've traveled all over the world with, and you're so gonna love this. This is the Open Door Experience. Well, welcome my friends, blessing and peace on you in Jesus' name. Welcome to the stage. This really cool set is actually the stage here at Open Door Church. Now I know that you guys are used to seeing me preach behind the pulpit here on this stage, but I've actually invited my family up here to tell you what we are doing behind the scenes. Seated right next to me is my beautiful bride, Miss Leanna Brewer. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good, sweetie. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for Because we're gonna be talking me. about one of your favorite subjects on the planet Earth. <laughs> oh, messy missions. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> missions and Uganda. Wow, there you go. Mindy Knight is sitting next to you. And whenever mm -hmm. we have this conversation, we're actually having a family conversation mm -hmm. because that yeah. is also my sister-in-law. That's yes. your sister-in-law. And Pastor Daryl is also your brother yep. and my brother-in-law. So we've been we've been in partnership doing ministry together now yeah. for going on a couple of decades. Yes. And uh, one of the big things that we do behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about is the work that we do in Uganda. So the first time we went was I, I thought it was ninety five, but I think I think you're saying it was like ninety seven. It was ninety seven, ninety eight. It was it was close to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we went over there, and I mean, I, other than Jim and Anita Maxwell. I'd never known anybody who had been over there before. Right. Yeah, me either. And I remember we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. It's a good thing we didn't know. <laughs> right. Because because we wouldn't have known, because we would have never signed up for it. But we went and there was a lot of extraordinary things that happened, but that was where we met Brother Colin. Yes, we did. Okay, we tell sure us about did. that. Wow. Um, we went there and the, the purpose that we went there for was to, you were speaking at conference, yep. conferences and doing big street outreaches and um, we had gone to an outside conference and there was thousands and thousands of people and this was a few days into it. We had been to some villages where we had done some big conferences, but this was in Fort Portal in the city. Right and, uh, on the Robinson Mountains. Yeah, it was right. gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Well. And uh, you were getting up there and getting ready to speak and this little boy came up and he just, he kind of went past all of the the crowds of people and went right up and he said, sir, you must feed me, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and you just kind of looked at him and you were like, well, I'm about to go on stage. So you told me to take care of him until I get done. Yep. And so I did, I, I talked to him and, and got to know him and um, he was just so bold and so beautiful. You know, we were already having anxiety for leaving our kids at home. Right. And so then God brings us this one. And, and I just asked him, I said, where, where are your parents, you know? It's it kind of an ignorant question, but I asked him and he said, well, I don't have any. And then we asked and, him, where do you live? And yeah. he, said, he said, outside. Mm -hmm. And so we just decided right then, okay, this is what our mission trip is all yep. about. And then we and decided after that to start our own boarding school. Sure did. And that's kind of how it all started. Sure it kind of all kinda, started yeah. with Colin. Yeah, it sure did. It's crazy. You guys, you guys had a front row seat for all of that. Yes, we did. And then, and then y'all started going on trips with us. What, when was y'all's first trip to Uganda? 2006. 2006, okay. I think was our first trip. Right on. So yeah. what happened? What happened to y'all on your trip to Uganda? Wow, um, I had no earthly idea that there were just thousands and thousands of children without parents. The, the orphan population was, the magnitude of that was more than I could wrap my head around. And the AIDS epidemic had just wiped out this whole middle generation. So there were- People our age. Yeah, they were gone. gone. 
And so there were elderly grandparents caring for these kids or else there was no one caring for these kids. And I just, I had never seen, had no grid for what that was. And um, really was overwhelming to see, to see all the orphans. And really at that point, I think our hearts were just, we have to, we have to help. What, what can we do? We just, you know, here in the States, you'd never see a two-year-old on the side of the road. Yep, just you know, 30 on the seconds side the road. later, there'd be someone there to help and tend to that child in, in every way. And these kids were on the street sleeping and begging and just, I, I just had never seen anything like it. And so we said, okay, we, we're not gonna hope somebody else shows up and does something. And we had no expertise in doing any of this. <laughs> we didn't have a clue what we were doing. No, we were photographers. We yeah. just said, okay, but we're gonna do something. Daryl, one of the things that really made an impact on you was seeing little boys and girls drinking green water out of the ditch. And mm -hmm. you're like, I gotta change that. Right. So tell me about that. Well, you know, like you just said, so that was my biggest impact was seeing the lack of water and you know, the dirty water and seeing all those tummies that were just bloated because of the waterborne diseases. And, you know, then God just revealed to me on that same trip, you know, what they were drinking. And then I was just horrified and cried and put a mission together all on the same day to figure it out. And that mission continues today. So it was definitely very life changing and impactful. So since that first trip, we have built entire villages, literal villages. We're talking about schools, we're talking about housing for kids, housing for teachers, we're talking about plantations with food. You know, we're talking about a banana plantation, a well, pineapple plantation, a soccer field, medical clinic, <laughs> uh, and of course, water wells, latrines, kitchens, the whole nine yards. And we've been yeah. doing that now for, right. I don't know how many years we've actually been doing that now. Yeah. But as our partnership has grown, we've just said yes, 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 right. yes, yes. Right. How many water wells have we dug so far? Over the years, I would say close to 200, but we're wow. at over, we're at probably 67 just for this year. Just for this year. So it's only been the last couple of years that we're not just doing four or five or six a year. Now yep. we're 50 something last year. We'll be at a hundred and something this year, so. And all so. of that, all of that changed as soon as we started the ODX TV show. And yes. we said, if anybody partners with us, we know what to spend that money on. Right. We know what to do because we're already there and we already have teams of people there. And so we started our TV show two and a half years ago. And that's when we went from doing five or six water wells a year to now it looks like this year, we're gonna have at least a hundred water wells. Right. And right. that's not counting the villages we're building, the medical clinics, the rescue houses, the freedom houses, the, the babies that we are saving, yes. which is huge. How many, how many babies have you guys rescued now? 56. 56 yes. babies. We're talking about baby, baby, baby. Baby babies, brand new babies. Mm -hmm. And so we have we have a rescue in Uganda that does nothing but rescue right. babies. And and I mean many times these babies are absolutely starving to death. And I mean yes. it's, it's it's no joke. It's no right. it's no hyperbole. I mean we how how old was uh, Mercy and Goodness? They were five months old when they, we got them. They were they were mm -hmm. they were five months they old. They were five months old. And how and how many pounds did they weigh a piece? Five pounds. Yeah, they were five pounders and they were yeah. five months old. I, I had never seen because they were the size, you know, lengthwise of a five month old. Right. But they were so okay. skinny. This is a picture of goodness and mercy now. Yeah, you can see they are not skinny anymore. They're perfect. <laughs> they're absolutely perfect. He is the happiest little boy. They call him <laughs> Smiley, which is so yeah. funny because that's what they my dad's nickname yeah, was. It's crazy. But the little boy always smiles and she is just the most precious little girl. Yeah. All of us went out stomping around one time and we went and rescued some babies one day. And uh, while I was there, we were, we were rescuing some babies way out in the jungle. I mean, you literally drive down this road and you guys check out this video. Man, the road goes from a road <laughs> to actually like a pig trail, just a little right. trail that people walk down. And we straddled that, went as far as we could until that played out. And then we walked and then we get to this village and then we get there and we find again, another four month old baby or mm -hmm. three month old baby that only weighs yeah. a couple of pounds because the mama died in childbirth. Right. And it's part of the cultural tradition there to let those children die. Right. And we've been able to rescue 56 we sure have. of those babies just in the past couple of years. And let me just speak into that. When, when we say we build schools and clinics, um, our friends over there like to say we do it first class. So, which means we do it to the standards of American standards. We don't change their culture as far as how they teach and they live and all of those things. But when we build, 
We build it like if our kids or grandkids yeah. were going to go there. There's no way we're going to build mm -hmm. somebody a house that we would not move our own kids in. Absolutely. Is that, is that the truth, guys? That is, is. true. Okay, so yeah. it's this is what you guys need to know. Number one, if you're going to do something for Jesus, you got to do it right. Yes. I mean, you can't do something halfway and do that in the name of King Jesus. Another thing, too, is this. You have to not care what the commitment is. Either let your yes be yes or let your no be no. Right. Again, we're, we're digging water wells, we're saving babies, and we're even saving boys and girls and young women from actual murder, from actually yes. being murdered. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we can sit here all day and tell those stories because we've been involved in this for so long. Right. One of the outreaches that we do is to albino children. Yeah. Like, what is that? Well, albino children are persecuted and their body yeah. parts are used in black magic. Yes. And in witchcraft. Yep. Yep. And so we've been rescuing them for a long time and they're so yeah. ostracized uh, and so rejected and so hated within their own community. So what we did was you put together a beauty pageant just so that people see them as people and they see the beauty in them. Because they're beautiful and they are people. And what happens is these kids are taught from the time they're little bitty that those people are not even human. And so to be able to bring that and say, you know what, we celebrate this. And because because we get to go in and influence these kids, what we celebrate, they celebrate. And it's changing generations and it's changing the way people think. This is a picture of Joel. And Joel Aww. is one of our favorite people on the planet I Earth. I love Joel. And Joel, how old was Joel whenever whenever we found him? He was 10. He was 10. Mm -hmm. So he spent 10 years of his life in a little hut, unable to come out. Little bitty hut. You know about that, Daryl. Mindy, you know about that. And, and we and just him. built him a house. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> yes. getting to that. I'm getting to that. So, so he spent 10 years of his life mm -hmm. inside a hut, unable yeah. to come out, unable to play with the other kids. Right. And we found him. Yeah. And were you with her on the day that she I walked was. him into? Yeah. So yeah. tell us about that. Walked him into the village and you were with her on but that you know, trip? Like how Leanna is with, you know, certain children and especially prosecuted or you know, persecuted children. There's probably four or 500 kids there, but she sees this albino boy. And, you know, she's just like, we gotta find out about him. I gotta know, you know, there and the other kids were giving him a hard time. And I don't even remember what brought him out. I don't know why he came to see us because it was such a, you know, it was just not- It was a big it deal was a big for, him, deal to for him to come out. Yeah, it was a big he deal. came out and then Leanna just gravitated and wanting to know more about him and the rest is history. Well, so now we're actually, and we've been supporting him now for years. We actually got yeah. him included into our school and yes. included into the local society there. Yeah, he's a normal little boy now, except for he's a big kid now. He's big, I mean, he's big. and he's, his English is so good. Oh, when we so first met him, crazy. he didn't speak any English. Yeah, it's crazy. He is a he's a rock star. He is a rock and star. And, and he kid. and he's living with his grandmother, I think. Yes. Okay, living with his grandmother mm -hmm. and Dad Gummit, uh, we're building them a whole new house. Yeah, a nice house. It's done. Nice house. It's done. We're, we <laughs> furnished it this week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, new beds. Well, they didn't have beds, mm -hmm. so they have new beds. Yeah. Uh, they have a couch. They have yeah. They have a. It's a beautiful house. I went and saw it. Well, I remember whenever yeah. we went out and we went walking down the trail to his house, and he was so proud of his oh, house. He was so proud. And it was terrible. Oh, we cried and cried it, and cried. It made me so, so we sad. We just cried. <laughs> I'm start crying right now. Uh, I was like, I cannot believe that that little boy lives in that place. Uh, we have got to change that for him. Uh, and so I just want to say a great big thank you, man, to all of our partners and everybody yes. who stands with us because these dreams that are coming true for people, uh, these are the dreams of King Jesus yeah. towards those people. He sees those people. Yes, he, he knows does. those people. And if the body of Jesus doesn't step up, I mean, who else is coming? Okay, so those are amazing testimonies, right? Well, these are all true stories and this is what God is doing among us. And you know what? Help me get the good news out. Become a media missionary, like this, share this, subscribe to this, comment on it, and then also hit the little, I don't know, that little bell button on there, right? God bless you so much.